we have the rear of the Subaru 2.5 single overhead cam. This is from a 2000 Subaru uh, Forester. And you can see that the uh, rear main seal needs to be replaced. And um, another thing to note is the um, metal cover uh, for the oil strainer. Uh, this is this is a good thing to have the metal um, if you can replace the plastic metal is a good bet just because it doesn't break down over here we have the uh, lines that were clipped that went to the um, the transmission cooler so we don't need those anymore we're gonna unbolt those these are the heater lines here those are gonna interface with the vans and then uh, up here we have the brake booster nipple. We're gonna we're gonna move this over to this side, and then we'll take this one and move it back over to this one. <laughs> um, it has some air conditioning hoses that we're probably gonna just take off and move out of the way. Um, but once I replace this main seal, I'm gonna mount the adapter plate um, and get it all prepped. Mount the clutch. Get that all set. Um, these here we need to undo and take out these studs we'll just use vice grips and take those out and these are bolts up here and then we'll uh, swing it around and go to the front the rear main seal is removed and uh, this is one way that I like to do it just hammering in a wood screw as long as you're very careful um, this works really well as long as you don't mar the surfaces with the threads and you just pull it out with a claw hammer and then put the new seal in and uh, if you use a three inch plumber's ABS cap you can just kind of slide it in and tap it in with a hammer and then I got the uh, adapter plate mounted this one's from uh, Rocky Mountain Westy uh, here's the adapter plate mounted using the uh, four um, bolts here and those go to 40 foot-pounds with red Loctite and then we have the flywheel mounted and these are 51 to 55 foot-pounds next up just gonna clean everything up and uh, mount the clutch equipment I'm gonna use the uh, clutch alignment tool and uh, get a new LUK clutch mounted I'm just about done with the prep on the back side of the engine. Uh, I have the clutch and pressure plate mounted. Uh, just follow Rocky Mountain Westy's uh, instructions. They're good. So a couple other other things that I've done is I moved the um, little vacuum nipple uh, from this side to this side. So this this one is ready to accept the brake booster. And I move the one from here over here. This is going to go to the vacuum canister. I'm just going to use the um, VW vacuum canister. Another thing that I've done is kind of uh, manipulate these heater, uh, metal heater lines just a touch, just to kind of orient them where they're going to be. Um, so if you can kind of see where they are, um, they're kind of vertical, just just a bit to the side of the uh, the plate here. And this will this will allow us to um, slide them right next to the starter, which will sit right about right here. Um, so next up, I'm just going to flip the engine around and uh, actually do the front end. So this is going to be the uh, timing belt, water pump, cam seals, things of that nature. Here we have the front of the engine and um, all the accessories are still on it. Uh, what we're gonna do is get these belts off and um, actually <clears throat> take this cooler off as well. Um, this guy and replace um, this thermostat housing with one that does not have the hole that comes out here um, because this guy needs to be uh, removed this this cooler see how low everything hangs down with the Rocky Mountain uh, shortened oil pan this will be the weak point the lowest point and uh, this will get ripped off in a jiffy uh, if he snags it on something so we're gonna remove this guy and you know just have a standard um, oil filter arrangement 
And then what I'm going to do is pop these timing covers off, get it, uh, get it lined up so that um, the actual timing marks match on all of these. And then I'm going to um, start, start addressing the timing belt. So taking that off getting the water pump replaced, taking a look at all the seals, getting those replaced, and then putting the timing belt back on. Here's the uh, front end with the timing covers removed, and um, you can see the timing marks are currently off right now. I just need to rotate the, uh, the engine. Um, I just wanted to show you quickly um, the oil cooler here is just about ready to come off. There's a, once you take the oil filter off, there's a nut on the bottom here. So you just need a uh, pretty big socket to get that undone. And then that'll come off and then uh, and then we'll put a standard filter on there. Here's a close-up shot of the uh, oil cooler, oil filter um, uh, attachment method. Um, it kind of sits sits up here like that, but this is way too long if you're eliminating that uh, oil uh, cooler. So what you need to do is get one of these. It's just off of a standard block without the cooler um, junkyard or dealer part, and that'll just go up there and allow you to um, use a standard oil filter. And then um, there's also a a uh, coolant port that needs to be plugged and this little elbow came off of um, that port to the oil cooler and that just needs to be plugged up or replaced with a uh, a cap so you can also get a cap at a dealer but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it up and so next up we're going to tackle the timing belt and water pump uh, I like to use these clamps uh, just to keep things kind of where they need to be. These are these bolts are best undone with an impact wrench, and uh, I just uh, undo them just slightly, and then um, what I do is make sure all my timing marks line up. So the crank is lined up here with the white paint. The uh, cam here and the cam over here. Now the on this engine, it's um, it's this little crease in the uh, the head, and then in on this side, left side, um, is the little mark notch in the timing belt cover. So um, once you get all of these idler pulleys uh, kind of um, broken, you can then uh, undo this lower left one here. And see, there's you know not a lot of stretch on the belt. Uh, that's the easiest one to undo first, and then everything should stay approximately where it is, where it is, and uh, and then you can undo all of these, including the tensioner, and then we'll get at the um, water pump. When uh, trying to get at the oil pump seal um, or the uh, crankshaft seal, um, or just to take off the the uh, oil pump. Uh, sometimes this cog gets stuck onto the uh, crankshaft and uh, there's two uh, holes to the side here that allow you to put a, um, a bolt into. Um, this is just a kind of a quick little tip on how to get this out. Um, this is just the air conditioning bracket and you can use two bolts off the engine or or uh, I think I think they're 12 millimeter heads yep so what you can do is just work these back and forth and uh, and it'll gently pull this off enough to where you can just pull it off by hand after a little back and forth with the uh, bolts uh, that are in the uh, the sprocket here um, this guy will come off and you can see what's what's holding it in place is just a little layer of uh, rust so I'm going to take some very fine sandpaper and some uh, WD-40 and just hit that and the internal bore on this guy. Now you don't want to lose this uh, Woodruff key uh, that's 
that's key to keeping this guy on. So just a uh, little tip for getting this guy off. Once the uh, crank sprocket is off, then you can remove the oil pump. Um, it has this locating dowel here um, and over here, which you just basically have to kind of tug on a little bit um, and pry just a, lightly and it'll pop right off and give you a nice little oil uh, <laughs> spigot. And then uh, I also took off the water pump. Um, so we'll take a look at the oil pump real quick. Here's the back side of the oil pump, and uh, it's a good idea to check these screws. Uh, sometimes they uh, back out and will cause pressure issues. So um, the other thing we'll have to do is replace this O-ring. These get swollen and cause, uh, cause harm. And then we need to be very careful and scrape all of the uh, existing gasket maker off and clean it up nicely with some carb cleaner and then reapply very very lightly to make sure that we cover all the bolt holes <laughs> and uh, and passageways but we don't want big clumps of um, of sealant getting into the oil passages that would that'd be a bummer <laughs> so anyway i'm gonna get started on that now that everything's nice and cleaned up, I'm just going to uh, put a little bit of uh, black RTV silicone on the uh, oil pump and get it installed and install the seal. And then I'm going to um, use the gasket on the water pump and install that. All right, got the oil pump and uh, crankshaft seal in and the water pumps in. So now we'll put the tensioner and um, all of the uh, idler bearings. And then we'll take a look at replacing the uh, camshaft seals. And now the idlers are on and uh, the cam seals in. When we go to put the uh, timing belt on, this one down here we'll leave off. And then we'll press it in once, uh, once all the routing is done. And then we'll release the tensioner. The uh, camshaft sprockets are on and uh, the timing belt went on just great and pulled the pin on the tensioner and rotated the assembly uh, at least two times and uh, now you can see we're all lined up and ready to rock. So basically we just uh, put the covers back on and um, get this guy ready to uh, put into the engine bay. Before we get the covers on, there's one more thing I wanted to kind of explain a little bit here. Uh, this guy is called a bump guard or something like that. Anyway, it's a um, it's a little um, guard that sits on the uh, crank sprocket and kind of sits really closely to the belt. Doesn't touch it obviously, but it sits close enough so that if, for example, you're in first gear parked on a hill and somebody bumps you from behind or from the front that and your transmission is engaged on your manual transmission this crankshaft will actually spin and sometimes that's enough to lift the belt off of it and skip a tooth so uh, so we don't want to jump teeth um, the obvious thing is to uh, if you don't have one of these and you're installed so this is from a uh, automatic transmission vehicle the engine um, just go down and get one of these at your Subaru dealer or you know if you're worried about that just park it in um, in a slightly higher gear so like fourth that possibly could work or just leave it in neutral and you won't ever have to really worry about that because the transmission kind of neutralizes that. In any case, I thought I'd mention that. There were some questions some folks had about these, so I thought I might bring that up. In any case, we're gonna throw on the uh, timing covers and uh, get it oriented to uh, move into the van.